You know the Delmarva Life's all about community, and that's your community too. Is there something going on in your neighborhood? We'd love to hear about it and see your photos from the event. Send the information our way along with any pictures you'd like to share. You can reach us at comments at delmarvalife.com or just like us on Facebook and share the information there. Well, by now you've probably heard of Pizza Rat, the rodent that inspired people all across the world to believe in their dreams. Comedian Matt Little posted this video on social media of a rat carrying a slice of pizza down a subway staircase in New York City. Of course, it didn't take long for this video to go viral. I believe this is the first time I've seen this. Pizza Rat <laughs> even became a Halloween costume. This is just one of several designs. He's now a celebrity and is pretty comical, but he actually brings attention to a growing problem. Calls to New York City's rat complaint hotline are on pace for a record year. Good <laughs> grief. Now, hopefully you're not dealing with pests like that in your home. But this time of year, many other insects and rodents will try to make their way inside. After all, it's getting cold outside and they want to be warm and toasty just like you. So joining us today to talk about ways to make sure those pests know they're not welcome in our homes is Rick Rice of Rice's Termite and Pest Control. Rick, thanks for joining us this afternoon. You know, we just saw Pizza Rat there and a big problem in New York City, but we're not immune to it here on Delmarva. They can be a problem here as well. Absolutely. They, many of us live around the water and mm -hmm. rats like to hang around hang around that. Mm -hmm. And then that just leads them to our house, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah. And then there's their cousin, the mighty little mouse, who gets pretty resourceful trying to get in. That's right. The uh, best way to start with controlling the problem is keeping them out of your house to begin with. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? I mean, what? Making sure any areas they can access into your house are closed up, sealed up. Some say uh, copper, wire, uh, copper wiring, like steel wool, Things yeah. like that can help keep them out. Because um, they can't chew through it? That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. Well, now we're looking here at, at like where the air conditioning <laughs> tubing comes into the house. That could be a place. Absolutely. That The cracks around where the pipes are going into the foundation, um, holes in your uh, crawl space vents, right. um, dryer vents, um, bad crawl space doors. And, and, and mm -hmm. these are really, really small places and they can get really small themselves, right? Absolutely. They can fit through, um, uh, I believe it's a quarter inch space. Mm -hmm. They can, as long as they can get their head through, they can get their body through. Wow. Mm -hmm. What about some places we don't think about um, access points? Uh, doors, um, uh, you know, making sure your thresholds are tight. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about their dryer vent. Um, they, things can get in through that. Um, heating and air, um, Right. Mm -hmm. um, and other pests can get through to your um, attic vents even. Really? So mm -hmm. if I see one, should I just assume that I got a bunch more? Not necessarily. One could just be one, or one could mean that they're showing herself to a worse problem. Um, you know, it could be more problem to deal with. So right. hopefully you just have one, you, you set a trap, you get rid of it. And That's you're right, done, and done it's done over with. with. Problem. Okay, um, even if we don't mm -hmm. see the mice, they leave traces, don't they? Yes. Tell us about some of those. They'll leave, you'll see their little droppings right. uh, laying around. Um, uh, you can see where they've chewed through to get to your food. Uh, maybe a, uh, bread, a loaf of bread, they've chewed through that to get yeah. through the, you know, to the bread, a cereal that kind of thing. Oh my goodness, yeah. and you need to get rid of it because Absolutely. they contaminate it all. Yes, they can leave a mess behind. Oh, okay, <laughs> so we've, we've talked about rats, we've talked about mice. Another big problem people are having are fruit flies. <laughs> oh my goodness, is there something we can do? The best thing to do with that is probably control where they're breeding. Uh, and they're breeding, they're in your drains. Um, you can make, sh they, they sell products where you can uh, clean the drains and it gets rid of you know all the gunk and everything down there where they're breeding. Okay. What about those little, like we take vinegar and a little bit of soap and put in a bowl with cellophane on top, does that work? They help. They're not going to be a solution to the problem. They're going to help control the adults, but it's it's still there's going to be a non-stop problem for you. It eventually goes away on its own. Eventually. Time, you got to yeah. wait them out. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Wait them out. <laughs> Another pesky problem, crickets. Yes. What do we do about the crickets? Again, uh, crickets are... are uh, the best way to keep them under control is to keep them out to begin with. Right. Uh, if you get one in the house, probably your best bet is to just catch them and let them out. Um, but, but what you really need to do is control them from the outside before they get in. Okay. What about sticky traps? Oh, uh, that'll catch them. That'll yeah. catch them. Um, but again, it's not uh, not going to be a solution to the problem. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you about this 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 mutant. <laughs> Camel cricket. Yes. These are some ugly little things. Yes, they are. Yes, yeah. they are. And, and where do we find those usually? Those are going to be, you're going to find them in cool, um, dark, damp places like basements, crawl spaces, garages. Right. Um, 
Mm -hmm. so areas like that, generally. Yeah. If we don't get them out before the cold sets in, are they going to still be there come spring? Absolutely. They're there to overwinter, stay warm, um, and by waiting till, uh, or by not dealing with the problem, just prolonging the problem until spring, because okay. they will be back. Right. Keep thing. them out to begin with. <laughs> there you go, Rick. All right. Thank Thanks you so lot, much. Rick. All great information. Good to know as we head into these colder months. And one lucky Del Marble Life viewer is going to head into winter with their home a little bit more prepared. Congratulations to Terry Bailey of Salisbury, today's first winner in our holiday guide giveaway. You've won a pest control treatment for your home or business from Rice's Termite and Pest Control, a $175 value. And you can find all kinds of information from Rice's about pest control by going to our website, WBOC.com, click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, speaking of pests, we don't want to come in contact with a venomous caterpillar from Canada. It's now being spotted in parts of Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's called the white hickory tussock moth caterpillar. There are a few things you need to know about it besides the fact that its name is kind of a mouthful. There is a big difference between these tent caterpillars and these exotic looking cousins known as the white hickory tussock moth caterpillar. These little guys are harmless. Mr. Exotic here carries venom. Have you ever seen these things around here before? Uh, yeah, they're, they're actually pretty common. They are an invasive species, um, so at some point they had to, been in, had to have been introduced, but um, we see them all the time. I've seen them all summer. Entomologist Dr. Chad Gore says these little white hairs have microscopic barbs on the end and the critter has its own variation of venom. The hairs embed into the skin and then they pull away from the, uh, from the caterpillar. So they're left behind and they cause a, a dermal reaction. Gore says they aren't lethal, but... It could be just a minor or no response at all to a minor response to you know, something that's kind of creating a pustule. And if ingested? They could make you pretty sick. As Dr. Gore said, they've been around most of the summer. They're searching around, they're eating and so forth, but pretty soon here they're going to be pupating. So they're going to create their little cocoon. Their food of choice, the green parts of leaves. Primarily nut trees are their favorites, the pecans, the, uh, the hickories and so forth. Uh, but you also find them in maples and oaks and elms and all, all kinds of other trees. And Gore's advice? It's best to, to leave them alone, let, let them do their thing. <laughs> Yuck. No. Now, while it might sound pretty frightening, Dr. Gore says the good news is if you do get one of these rashes, they're very treatable. Use your typical kind of treatment for a rash. If it persists, if it gets inflamed, go ahead and see your doctor. I'm just going to stay away from stay them. Away from <laughs> well, one way you can keep that critter along with others out of your home is by making certain you have a garage door that closes. Up next on Delmarva Life, we're talking the ups and downs of garage doors. <laughs> from looks to safety features to energy savings, we run down all you need to consider. And a little later on, our Sean Strike is once again out and about with the folks from Sussex County Federal Credit Union looking for that lucky individual to pay it forward. You're going to see who it is coming up. But first, it's time to vote for Delmarva's neediest roof. From now through November 27th, you can vote for three finalists. The fourth annual Delmarva's neediest roof giveaway is sponsored by Spicer Brothers Construction. The winner will be announced December 3rd. To see the nominees and to vote, go to our website, WBOC.com. Click on our picture at the top of the page. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.